Well, hello, my babies. Good to see you again. Missed you last week. It was a holiday. So we all decided, you know, we'd take a little time and um, go maybe visit some people we haven't visited in a while and, and relax and have a nice time. And really did have barbecue and everything, you know, and a few uh, family friends came over. A few? <laughs> well, like I said, a few family friends came over. And uh, they seemed to, everybody seemed to have a good time. And it turned out very nice. We went to um, visit our cousin of ours, Jean. And um, they went over there for a few hours. And, and then they came back here. And uh, we did our thing over here. And uh, <clears throat> something, you know, I, I sit up here each week. And I, you, you ask me these little questions, and I just want you to know now, these questions and things that I try to answer uh, for you are, it's, it's my opinion, it's nobody else's opinion, it's just mine. Uh, if it can help you out in any kind of way, shape, or form, uh, I'm happy for you. You know, but it's nothing that I say that you have to do or anything like that. And, um, go ahead, let's get this started. Mm. Well, before we start, um, I was looking at your shirt, Descendant of a Field Negro on Still I Rise. Is there anything you want to say about uh, Maya Angelou after she passed? I sat and I watched the show uh, with uh, her yesterday, her and Oprah Winfrey. She had uh, quite a few shows that she had did with her on, and one came, they came on like back to back. And I enjoyed this so much. And it's, it's, it showed you where it started back, I believe it was uh, in the 60s. And it, it showed you uh, each one that came on, showed you how she aged through the years, how she progressed through the years, and how you develop. And she developed and she grew more and more uh, through the years that she came on um, up until I believe it was the final show that um, she had when her hair was completely snow white. And um, she was um, she was so happy in the shows that they did. It, it, it tickled me, you know, plus it made me cry, you know, because we had lost someone, uh, a poet, who is, uh, was so great. And what she did and what she said and her opinions that um, she tried to put out and she tried to teach a lot of the young women out here. Because nowadays we don't really have anyone to really um, teach us too many things. You know, when we came up. Our grandmothers, great grandmothers, and things like that, they all lived in the house with us. So you had a lot of good examples, and then, then sometimes you had a bad, bad example. But then again, they taught you different things. You learned different things. Being the little guy or the youngest guy in there, watching and seeing what, what it was that they do, or and then listening to what it was that they were trying to tell you. And, um,. Um, I'm sorry that she's gone, but I'm glad that I knew the little bit that I did know of her. I'm glad that I did know that, and it, it made me feel, it really made me feel good. And uh, I only wish I had a tape of the, uh, of the show, whereas um, I could play it whenever I felt as though um, I might feel a little down, or I might, might need a little bit of encouragement, and doing what it is that I do. Like she said, I rise. I rise. Uh, I, I, I taped them on the um, DVR yesterday uh -huh. when they came on. All right, so you, you guys sent some letters and stuff. And um, well, I asked if you write, please make sure it's under two paragraphs because I like to read them 
out loud and I need you to get to the point. Tell the story in the first paragraph, then get to the point in the second paragraph. Please make sure y'all start off clicking that um, thumbs up button and uh, make sure y'all share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and wherever else. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I need y'all to share the videos. Please. Please do that for me. Alright, so we're going to uh, start with the first question. It says, we love those strippers. My friends and I often go to the... the to see the male exotic dancers when they have shows here in Philly uh -huh. on a weekly to monthly basis. My best friend who has been in a relationship with her boyfriend for six years sleep with some of the strippers every time we go out of town or in town. Uh -huh. Her boyfriend keeps telling me that one day we are going to unclaimed diamonds to pick out her engagement ring. I feel so bad every time because he is an awesome man. It is so hard to find a man who will be good to you especially in Philly because they are a mess. And I remind her of that all the time, but she don't care. We will be going to North Carolina in August for the annual North Carolina vs. the World weekend. All male strippers come from all over the world to compete against each other, and it is a fun-filled weekend. My best friend is planning to have sex with whoever wanted, it, and I'm so scared. Should I tell her that her man wants to propose to her, or should I shut my mouth and see what happens? I am tired of buying pregnancy tests too. Please shake my head. Please help. Well, the best thing I can say about that, shut your mouth and mind your business. Um, sometimes, you may think you're doing a person a favor by telling what you've seen or telling what you know. And sometimes it's best not to say anything at all. Um, make the person know, to make, might make that person think that you have been um, working against them or, or plotting against them and it just, it just didn't sound right when you said that uh, uh, this person wants to sleep with the, the, the uh, male strippers. That doesn't sound too healthy. Um, because, you know, you, they go out there and they meet people from all over the world. People don't say what they have. They're not going to tell you. And uh, you might hook up with something that you don't want. And uh, it's, it's just not a wise idea to me to go out there and hook up with something and maybe come back with something you don't want. So the best thing I think you should do about that is, uh, hey, don't do it yourself. And um, you can maybe uh, lay out a few pointers of, you know, things that you shouldn't do. But that don't mean that uh, you should tell, you should ruin the surprise if he's really going to give her the ring and uh, make it a time where he's going to propose to her and everything. You don't want to spoil that for him, uh, you know, or anything like that. So, uh, you know, just leave it alone. I know it's hard, but sometimes it's better to do that. Uh, so this is the next question. It says, um, I'm a 23-year-old black female who lives in Germany. In the last year, I discovered that I'm attracted to girls. I don't have any sexual experience with men or women. I have always been a girly girl. I like to dress up and go out to go shopping with my girlfriends and to party. My family is a very conservative and Christian family. They would never on earth accept me being gay or bisexual. I don't know myself. She said, what? Okay, whatever. It will hurt them so much and they will cast me out. I have always been their good little girl and I don't want to disappoint them because they did so much for me and my brother. And on top of that, I'm financially dependent on them because I will be in university for the next four years. And I'll still live with them. I'm diagnosed with depression and I lost a lot of weight in the last year because I can't eat. 
I'm suicidal because I can't stop thinking about if I'm gay or not. And with every female I see on the street or anywhere, I question myself if I'm attracted to her. What should I do? Go find out. That's the best thing I could tell you to do. Ain't no use running yourself crazy about it. You might not really be after all. You know, a lot of times what we see the most is not the enemy. You know, you might think that you're gay or whatever it is, you know, and find out that eh, it's not for you after all. You know, and you need to find that out. Stop worrying about uh, where I'm going to get my next glass of water from or a crust of bread. And give yourself some peace of mind. And find out what it is that you really want to do. And if you do find out that um, you're that way, then um, go ahead and do what you got to do for you. You can take care of yourself. Uh, you wouldn't be the only person who went to school and held a job. And um, then you, then again, again, you might not know. Uh, somebody in your family might be that way too, and this ain't said nothing. You know, people have a lot of. Uh, bones sometimes hidden in their closets that they don't tell nobody. So you probably wouldn't be the only one. Mm -hmm. But if it's bothering you that bad, go find out, baby. That's the best thing I could tell you. Don't torture yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, I really need advice on a place in, I'm at in my life right now. I'm struggling with my self-esteem finding myself and my sexuality being gay as a 20 year old man and I need advice on revealing to my family that I am gay and have been since my early teen years shit please <laughs> how do I tell my family especially my mother considering we have a strong and great relationship I feel as though most of my family already know because there are, <laughs> because there, there are times I have a deep feeling that they do but my parents do not believe in same-sex relationships. And oh, how can I finally tell them about myself so that this heavy burden can be lifted away from my life and I can move forward and enjoy my life? Baby, they already know, and you know they know. Come on, <laughs> stop playing games. You know, <clears throat> they know, but it's just a thing whereas um, you don't push the issue. If you don't push the issue, then I won't push it. You know, and um, you don't say anything, I won't say anything. You know, it's, it's, it's a thing whereas you're my baby and I love you. And, and if that's what's going to make you happy and that's the way you want to spend your life, it's a hard life to live. It's not an easy life because you have so many people that are so against it. But nowadays, it's not as hard as it was 10 or 15 years ago. And I say, if that's what's going to make you happy, go ahead and do it. You shouldn't have to say anything to them. They already know. Do what you got to do. Go ahead and be happy. Like you said. Be happy. Okay, this one says, um, Hi, Mama Scorpion. I recently got engaged to my longtime boyfriend over nine years, and I have been planning for our wedding for next summer. Mm. I recently asked one of my friends of two years to be my maid of honor this past Sunday. When I asked her, I sensed that she was surprised. But it wasn't in the way that I expected. We went out with a group of friends afterwards, and she didn't share it with them until I brought it up. However, she did say yes. Now when I talk to her, it's not the same. Our conversations are short and simple. I always go with my gut, and something tells me she's not feeling the role I've bestowed upon her. I'm not sure if I'm being paranoid or sensitive, but I'm wondering if I made the right decision. Should I talk to her about my concerns or should I let it go and see what happens? Talk to her about it. 
uh, see what it is that she really wants to do. If she really doesn't want to do it, it's no good having somebody um, by your side who doesn't have your heart and concerns in her hands, too. Um, maybe she didn't know that you felt that way about her. You know, or you felt that close about her. And um, you should just ask her. Find out. Go ahead and find out. Mm -hmm. It'd be better for you to find out than uh, you go to get get into the middle of it and then you got to stop what you're doing and start all over again. Go ahead and make sure this is what she wants to really do. If not, don't take offense to it. Just, just find somebody else who would rather do it than her. That's all. Don't have to get upset about it. Okay. You know, already picked it up. Your senses have picked it up. You got good senses. She should. I don't know. That's two years. That's, that's kind of fast. Pick somebody like that. All right. Um, go back to this down going folder. Okay. This one says... I'm 28 years old. I'm a 28 year old female. I've been single for a very long time. Now that I'm almost 30, I'm starting to go into panic mode. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's my dream to settle down with a husband and have kids. I really want kids. I feel like I'm running out of time. The problem is I don't have a boyfriend. I actually had like one real boyfriend in my life. Now I've been in love, but it always seems to be with someone that doesn't quite feel the same and doesn't want to commit to me. I don't even know how to meet people anymore, and I've kind of isolated myself. I do pray for my husband and my family, and my prayers are very specific. What other advice can you give me? I hope you can help me. Well, they have different organizations and little clubs that you can join uh, to meet <coughs> to meet men. Uh, try to find somebody that you might like to be with. Uh, some of them are pretty are, are pretty good and doing that well, um, well and what's the hurry I know you're, you're running to 30 but still you know um, try to get out there and enjoy yourself and know what it is again to be uh, circulating yourself and, 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 and knowing what it is to, to be go on dates and the to go out and, and to laugh and have fun with a man and enjoy yourself and stop trying to do everything in a hurry because a lot of times when you try to do things in a hurry you miss a few things well you miss a whole lot of things you're going to have them babies you know and um, you'll have the life that you want just be a little more selective don't be in a hurry be a little more selective in what you want and get it. Go after it once you find it. And uh, like I said, you're going to have them babies that you want. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the next man. What she got, what they got, what they got. Because you don't know what they're going through to keep what they got. You know, it's not necessarily getting what you want. You got to keep it after you get it. That's the uh, that's the whole trick to marriage, keeping what you got. Because sometimes it's 60, 40, or 80, 20. Sometimes you give them more than the other person to give. It takes a lot to give. And um, you wonder how come you got to give so much and the other person doesn't. But sometimes those things go down. So let's take your time a little bit. Like I said, find a different organization or find one that you might like a little bit better than the other ones. Try a couple of them out and see what it's like. You yeah, also got their um, speed date and stuff too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Try that. This one says, I'm a 17-year-old female and ever since I was two weeks old, I had my stepfather in my life. He was the best father you could ask for. My real father was never there, but I didn't care due to the fact that I had a father figure. 
When I was 15, my parents divorced and my stepfather didn't stick around. Therefore, I was left with no father. A few months after the divorce, my real father and I started talking. I don't like talking to men due to the fact that I only grew up with my brother and stepdad. So when I talk to my real father, I usually text him and I was usually was the one starting the conversation. He put a phone he put a phone in my name and I and I stopped texting him as much. He always feels like I should be the one reaching out on Father's Day of last year. It was eight in the morning, I didn't tell him Happy Father's Day fast enough for him, so he turned my phone off and I stopped hearing from him. He always has been the type that doesn't accept his wrongdoing and says he's been out in my life because my mother didn't allow it, which was far from the truth. It was a night I screamed and cried for him. I've always wanted that father to do the relationship with him, but it seems like I have I never had it. My question is, should I try to reach out again or just let it go? Every time I do reach out, he's there for a few weeks and then he's gone. If this is if this if this is the answer, thanks for your time. Um, well, at least you got a father. There are a lot of people who never had a daddy, never seen their daddy or, <coughs> or anything like that of a, of a man to, to call their father. I had an uncle who was who served as my father and um, he was wonderful. You know, because if I was wrong, he'd sit me down and he would tell me, you know, he <clears throat> a lot of times do my hair and he laugh and, and talk with me and, and listen to um, what my problems might have been at that time, you know. And, um, hey, if he only wants to show up every now and then, let him just show up when he wants to show up. Um, you can't force somebody to be in your life who don't want to be there. So maybe he feels guilty about all those times he claimed that he was, he, your, your mom wouldn't let him participate. <coughs> and um, like I said, maybe he feels guilty about it and can't face you or don't want to face you. So let him get what he want to give and let it go heat on. Um, you're a daddy's girl. You want to be a daddy's girl, but, you know, hey, sometimes it's just not meant like uh, meant to be that way. Yeah, you can't force everything to be the way you want it to be. Just accept what, what God gives you and go ahead on. Um, <coughs> like I said, at least you do still have a father. Some people never have had one. So just just try to be grateful for what you do have. And um, don't let it upset you. Just go on and live with it. This one says, hope all is well for you and your family. Me and my sister have always had a not so close relationship with each other. We are four years apart and she's the oldest. She resents me because she thinks our mom treats me better, which is crazy. So she has never tried to have a relationship outside of holidays with me and makes me sad at times. Recently, my father passed away in March and I tried to make amends for both our sake, but she still will not talk to me because my father left me in charge of his final days and what he wanted because they two were not close. So he felt I would be the best person to handle it all. This has been, this has really made things worse because she feels like I intentionally excluded her from medical decisions as well as funeral arrangements. But when asked for help on calls, she says she doesn't have any money. So when things were done, she didn't like the choices I had made for him, but wouldn't say it to me. The military issued me a flag the day of the funeral for my father's service and that pissed her all to the highest pissativity. I never heard that before. <laughs> Since she hasn't spoke or reached or even reached out to me when I extended her hand, she said that I act like an only child, so she doesn't want anything to do with me. I'm so hurt and confused that I sometimes cry as to why I'm not close with the only sibling I have in this world. 
Please help me. Should I say forget it and move on or continue to try and break down this wall she seems to have against me? Go ahead on. Move on. You know what? Sometimes it's not meant for some people to be close. You could try all day and try all night. And the more you try, the, the wider that gap, that gap becomes. It's just like a hole in the street. You try to patch it up, it gets bigger. Each day you look at it, it gets bigger. Somebody drives over it, it gets even bigger. And you're wondering why, why me, what did I do, what did I say? Sometimes it's not anything that you really did. It's just happened to be that way. That person could actually be jealous over the way you tie your shoes. Or the way you comb your hair. That's just how some people are. <laughs> but you know what? Love the one you with. Love the people you with. Love the people that you deal with each and every day. Love is such a, a word that means so many things. And, and yet we still don't understand it. It, it, it is so complicated, yet it can, it can give you so much happiness and so much joy, and, and, and it can also, it can bust you in two. We think of only when, we, when somebody say, oh, I love you, we think of hearts and flowers and this and that, but it's not just that. It's trying to understand a person, or being there when that person has something on their mind and they, and they can't get off of it and they can't sleep, they can't close their eyes and they have somebody that they can t talk it until their tongue fall out and you sit there and you listen. <clears throat> my, all, my girlfriend's always told me that I always had an ear for listening to people. Um, and of course to me that seemed like the most important thing in the world is to listen to what, what is being said to you. Um, it may not be the fact that you don't have no money, or it may not even be the fact that you don't have nowhere to go. It's, it just may be the fact that you just want somebody to be there. You know, so, if she don't wanna love you, she's, she's the one that's missing out. You know, she's missing out on a great sister. Someone that could go places together. And you could go shopping or you can go on trips or go around the world even. You know, and loving each other and somebody to be there to hold your head or to wipe your brow or to hug and kiss you and tell you, I love you. And I'm going to be here for you no matter what. That means a lot when you, when you need somebody. When you, see, you know you can count on somebody, because a lot of times, them, some of the people that you think you can count on, you can't count on them at all. At all. When lowdown comes to showdown, they step back out of the way. You can't even find them. Oh, I had something else I had uh, uh, really important to do. It gets like that sometimes. So, love the one you with. You know, if she come around, Pray on it. And ask God to open up her heart, her mind, her body, her soul, so that she could see that you don't mean her no harm. You only want to love her. You only want to be a part of her. And you want to uh, show her what love is. Because half these people that spread around here and how about love don't even know what the, the, the word love really means at all. Because it can mean so many things. So, but if it's going to stop your world from moving, don't let it stop your world from moving. Don't let it do that to you. Keep on pushing on. Let me know. All right, um, this is the last question. It's kind of long, so I'm going to read it. Uh, hey, Mama Scorpion, almost two years ago on June 26th, I got an abortion. Uh -huh. At the time, I was 20 years old college student and my boyfriend wasn't that supportive. We, mutu we mutually agreed not to continue the pregnancy, although he helped me create the child, paid for the surgery, and took care of me the day of the abortion. I received no su emotional support from him after the abortion was done. Is that the bus? Yeah. 
That's what it sound like. He wouldn't let me talk about it. He wouldn't let me express my feelings because he claimed I don't want to bring negativity into the past of our relationship. Our relationship eventually ended because he cheated on me numerous times. I walked in on him and a girl in his bed and I whipped his ass. But what hurt the most is that he left me for another woman when my brother died. He didn't even come to the funeral. Because of him, I developed major anger and anxiety issues. Now, two years later, I've learned to manage them. I pulled myself out of dark depression. I'm happy again. I've healed and forgiven him so I can have closure. I have recently had a conversation with him after two years of us ignoring each other. Although he is still with the other woman he left me for, he told me that he loves me and thinks about the baby all the time and it really hurts him. He spilled out all of his emotions that he was holding in and told me everything that I've been wanting to hear him say. We've even established a very small friendship again. And he told me that if I need to talk to him about anything, he's there for me. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about our baby and wondering if I've made the right decision. My friends and family don't want me to talk to him, and I totally understand why. But none of them can relate with me. Oh, girl. None of them can relate with me because of the abortion, because of none of them know what it's like to go through something like that. And they didn't help me conceive the child. Mama Scorpion, I know that my ex is an asshole and he probably doesn't even deserve to be in my presence. But I feel that he is the only one that I can talk to and he would give me the support that I needed for two years that I still hold on to to this day. I want to talk to him because it was his responsibility to me it was to be a man in the first place and support me. Should I talk to him about the baby or just keep it to myself and tough it out? She's just, you know what, I just think that she's guilty because she had an abortion she had nobody to talk to, and he the only one giving her the time of day. Like this I is. think it's a thing whereas, that's a hard thing. Oh my goodness. You have a life going inside you and you stop it. You go get an abortion. The thing about it does nobody know about it. But you, the man upstairs, and the guy that helped you create it. Mm -hmm. And so who could you talk to about it? A lot of times, even oh, any kind of death, you need someone to talk to about it. When someone dies, uh, you, you see about burying them, what it takes to get that part together. And, then you have the funeral and put them in the ground and and afterwards you go sit together and you, you congregate, you talk about it. Um, you, you talk about the good and the bad about that person or whatever a lot of times. And uh, sometimes that's all there is to it. And then you, you, you call yourself putting it to rest. But when you don't have nobody to talk to at all because you didn't tell anybody, go to the guy. Talk to him. Look, if you can't talk to God, you can't talk to nobody. Well, I'll sit up here and just talk to God. Everybody will think I'm crazy. No, he won't. Talk to him. Tell him about it. He can answer your darn good and let you know how he felt about it. You know, you can't make a baby pay for your shortcomings. Uh oh, I didn't pick out the right man on this cause. I didn't pick out the right daddy for you. You can't come here. No, it don't work that way. I, oh, you can't come here right now because I'm this inconven inconvenience for me. It don't work that way. I'll tell you what my grandma told me. It's going to get here if it has to crawl out your ear. You let it get up there, it's going to get here. You can't change that on life. You just can't turn it back around and say, go back. It's a, No, it don't work that way. It don't. You don't necessarily need him because uh, you ain't got nobody to talk to about it. If you want to talk to the man, go ahead and talk to him. But don't make no mistake and have another one if not, that's not what you want to really do. 
I mean, you're not the only one in the world who's ever made a mistake. Everybody makes all kinds of mistakes. Oh my God, do we make mistakes? Do we? And ask God to forgive us for being so foolish and hard-headed and not wanting to listen. Thinking you know something and you don't know crap. Life is, 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 is really complicated. And when you get to when you get to that part of life where, where another soul gets involved, someone you gotta clean them up. Well, if I give it away, it'll it'll make it better. A lot of times that don't make it better at all. In the olden days, they snatched your baby away from you, threw you down south, snatched your baby from you, and never seen it again. So you're back up south. So you're back up north. You done went down south, you was pregnant. When you come back, you're not. Grandmama kept the baby. Uh, baby never knew who was the real mother and who wasn't. Thinking grandma was the real baby, was the real mother, when it was somebody that was up north. You know, sometimes it solved the problem, and a lot of times it didn't. You know, because... Um, Hey, when when lowdown comes to showdown, the time to get married and everything, you either told your man about this baby that you got down south, who's who's almost grown, who you had five or six years ago. You know, everybody wants somebody to think that they're perfect, but you're not. Everybody makes mistakes, and if people can't accept you for who you are, a real person, then um. Uh, you don't need to be around them. This week we mostly talked about um, mistakes that we made. <clears throat> We're picking out partners. All my life is going past me. I'm in such a hurry because I'm almost going to get 30 or 40. Don't worry about it. It's not going to go that fast. They got organizations, like I said, out here you can join. And you meet people. Take the time. When you do things in a hurry, you make a lot of mistakes. And, <clears throat> yeah, you have abortions. I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm not for abortions. I'm not. I'm really not. I can't tell you that it's all right because it's not not for me anyway. But like I said, we all make mistakes. But you got to take that to your heavenly father. <clears throat> and I know he'll listen. If nobody in the whole, whole universe won't listen, he will. And they have people that will sit and listen to you too. We ain't gotta run to him and, and ask him because he was the baby daddy, he the only one that'll listen to you. Or he the only one that'll know how you'll feel about it feel about it inside. So other people will know. Other women organizations out there that will listen to what it is you got to say, baby. Don't let it run you up the tree. What's done is done. You can't undo it, believe me. You, him, or nobody else can't undo it. The decision was made, you made it. It's done, it's over with. All you know is you made the wrong decision. So, I tell you all, take your time in doing what you're doing. Think about it. Don't be so quick to love something because Love don't come overnight. It takes its time. To, you got to nourish it like a, a, a flower, a plant. Give it good food and sunlight and take your time with it and nourish it. And it'll grow. Sometimes into the most beautiful thing you've ever seen on this universe. Family sharing giving of themselves 
and having someone to um, talk to. Mostly in my family, there's so many of us. Because I come from one of them families that had 18 kids. Mm. And got cousins up the bazoozas and down the bazoozas. And they still coming. You know, but it's, it's just the idea that, you know, cousins a lot of time, they pair off in my family with um, this one and that one. And, and, and they, they made up together to, to the point whereas I laugh and talk with you all the time. Well, I'm with you all the time because I grow up with you. Sometimes it's two or three of them coming at the same time, you know. And um, they learn how to love each other. And when we have something, boy, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. ooh, <laughs> girl. I'm telling you, sir, it's a big thing. But you know I love them. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them up for all the tea in China. So if, even if it's just you and, and one person, you and a half-sister or a half-brother, just love them for what they are, who they are. You know, it does, you don't have to be a, a great, big, a, a whole lot of people to do, to find out what love is. i tell you one thing, if you missed it, you sure have missed the world. Because that's the most beautiful thing that God ever put to, put together. So take your time with it. Love it. Nourish it. Take your time. Powder it. Like you do a baby. Wash that baby down. And play with it. Laugh and talk with it. Patty cake or whatever else. Or take your time and lotion it down and dress it and talk to it. That's how life goes. Don't be so quick to spend life, to, to, to rush your life. You know, because even after you find this man and get married to him, you got to, you got to keep him. How you going to keep him? You know, and uh, it's a wonderful thing, though. So the best thing I can tell you is push the buttons. <laughs> You've been forgetting about me. I haven't forgot about you. I like laughing and talking to you. I like hearing that, you know, um, you find out that you ain't the only one that's got a problem. There's other people out there that's got problems just like you. You know. So, uh, just keep letting us know what you're about. Just tell us how you feel about yourself. What, what's going on with you. You know, and um, I'm here to listen. Do the best I can in trying to answer your question. Let me know about it.